Welcome back everybody, it's Sergio Jesus here. In this video, we're looking at how to W key like fours you are. The end of last season was an absolute tear with winning tournaments back to back to back in a row on a U, which is obviously incredibly hard to do. Add in my first place spot for season six because of how insanely consistent he played throughout that, and also how well he did in all the major finals like DreamHack and the FNCS where he got third place. And he actually continued over into the start of this season with a first place in the UEFA Euro Cup, which is what we're looking through here today. This will help you guys out for solo cash cups and any other tournaments like that, or just some solo in general. So let's get straight into it. So first things first, two quick movement tips. Whenever you go to recycle a pad like Forza you know is doing here, just make sure you jump on it from the very straight angle, coming straight forward to it like this. A lot of people make mistake of going from the side to kind of going for a diagonal. Just come straight on, jump from a little bit away, and then you're going to go towards them. And the next tip is to make sure with launch pads back in the game that you're learning to bunny hop and doing it at most points throughout the game. It's so much easier for rotating fast. Whenever you land on a tarp, you can get ahead of Storm as well later on in the game just by hitting a bunny hop. So you can see here, he does it, just spam space bar, don't use scroll or anything. And then from there, he gets a nice piece control versus this guy, gets a high wall and edits through and commits to the end jewel. Okay, so one quick tip when it comes for crossover placement, why you're going for piece control, something Forza Yard does here. So when he's going for this wall place and he gets it, he's going to go for a cone slide straight away. Instead of making the mistake of using his pickaxe, it's first of all just using his AR to break because it's a lot quicker. And then as soon as he breaks in place of the cone, you can see he drags his crossover over and gets the exit control on this guy reboxing upwards. Now this guy is forced to come back into a 4 zr because he's already got that cone there. Now he's all the control and he's just going to make sure he rushes the fight. Doesn't let the guy rebox at all, especially because there's drone later in the game. So he wants to eliminate him pretty quickly. Okay, so right here, this was an absolutely beautiful fight by 4 zr in terms of the lead up to actual final kill. So first of all, this is just something very simple. When somebody's peeking you from low ground, even if you're on low ground peeking somebody on high ground, you want to make sure you switch up your angles and try to catch them off guard. So you get a little bit of a chip damage tag versus so the player immediately, straight away, just drops down to the left hand side silently and catches them off guard since the guy's kind of flopping around. From there, as he's approaching and going for the replace from this wall here, the guy starts peeking behind the top priority. Instead of peeking into that, I'm trying to go for some rotate ramp play where it's quite easy to get tagged. Instead, just spray this wall and go for a replacement on the wall that's low HP that the guy's just edited. He's going to do this exact same thing here in a second after he goes for kind of wall takes from above. These are probably the best wall takes you can do, just no risk involved in them unless you get hit with like a really dangerous peak. But he just basically approaches from above, goes to those wall places, and then finally here, after he's made the guy and pressured the guy enough where he's not healed up fully, then he commits down onto the wall replace just like this, and he's perfectly ready for what the guy's counterplay is going to do. Knowing the kind of fight psychology of this guy keep on doing top right and peaks, what he does is drop down to the right hand side of his cone, so he drops down to the right, and also crouches at the same time, which I think is really underrated, is crouching his correct moments. So the guy, of course, instantly goes for a top right and peak. What does Grizzly Falls gonna do? Instead of trying to bait into it and go for some kind of weird peak from the side, instead he's gonna go ahead and shotgun replace the, the wall, just like that, place in a ramp which phases the guy backwards, so now he's below the ramp. Also forced him to miss the shot because he got phased the ramp first time, first of all. Then he goes for the wall place at the same time, goes to the edit, has the piece of control, and then from there the guy's able to escape. So fight drags on for a little bit longer, just pressure them continuously, remembering all these edits he has from earlier, and then finally actually wins the angel in the second tour. Okay, so this is something I talked about in my previous House WQ videos, just how to make sure you've got yourself in a good position to take a smart fight, which I think Forza does really well in these tournaments where it's kind of closed, and obviously the players that you're fighting are all better. So it's always just sitting on the edge of the zone. He knows that he's got white heels in case he gets into a storm fight. And he's also trying to make sure he gets into a position where he's able to get damage before the fight starts. You never want to start a fight versus another good player where you don't have the upper hand advantage. So he hides behind the tree, make sure he right and peeks into a nice little chip damage to open the fight. Now he knows he's got a little bit of advantage, how he doesn't want to lose that advantage. So he's going to approach very cautiously and wait for this other player to make a mistake kind of when they're reboxing. Doesn't immediately drop down right there. Instead, goes and approaches from above very safely like this. You can see at how many different types of builds that he places around him to make sure he's covered off from this guy. Going for some kind of counterplay immediately, especially considering he's got a gold spaz. Now here, finally goes for a right hand peak very safely. Just like the one small mistake, the guy reboxing too many times, he catches him off guard with a close wall. Right hand peeks into his get a little bit more damage. And then from here, he's just going to play very patiently and make sure he doesn't rush into one of these peaks. It's a crack, waits for the guy to make the mistake again of running away, kind of panicking because he's in a storm fire without whites. And then Forzio gets some really nice upgrades and loot before endgame. So one thing that Forzio actually started doing at the end of last season that not a lot of players were doing beforehand is actually going for these period of plays the whole time during mid-game fights in trios and also during moving zones, which I'll show in a second tier. So the general idea is he goes for a period of play just like this. So you can see he's going to turn around and make sure his walls are pre-edited just like that. 
and he's going to run forward because he's the lowest ping player and hold the wall while his teammates spray for it. So he gets the wall just like there, comes forward again, gets the wall replaced, and then instantly gets that kill. The thing is a pre edit is you don't have to wait for that extra delay where you have to edit, wait for it to confirm, and then go for the shot. You can instantly shoot somebody just like that. He gets the knock, and this is the one downside with pre edits is in solos, it's quite easy to die if you don't be able to reset them like he's not able to hit. However, if you're fighting with the trolls and you get that initial knock, you should be completely chilling afterwards if you're all playing together. You can also see them actually doing pre edits again during the moving zone here in a second here. He goes for this massive pre edit on his wall in a second. Make sure they're coming everything. Now they go for the break, get that wall replaced from across, and again, it's an instant knock on this other player who's caught completely off guard. It is really strong, obviously, just take a lot of practice since this is one of the top tier teams and they've only just been able to master it just recently. So one thing that Noah really does that not a lot of other players do is he never gives up a single bit of damage when he's got that upper hand and he's approaching the box. So in this fight versus Noah Riley, for example, you can see here, Noah's never really able to actually get some counter damage in or even tries to go for a play for a long period of time. He's just constantly pressuring, making sure he's going for different things. You can see there, he's hitting the floor, getting the cone on top, going for the wall place. And then as soon as Noah tries to go for some kind of counter plays, get some damage in, so you can have a little bit of a breather and actually go for some heals. Forza is just instantly ready. He's been watching exactly what Nora is doing while he's approaching from the box. And again, just constant pressure as he's approaching the box. He never really hops on a wall and instantly starts double swing it. Instead, he's always pressuring his AR, using it as a long range pickaxe, you can see here, to not take any risks. And eventually, Nora just reboxes and then dies to a third party. It's just a really good example of something you guys can put into your own gameplay just because of the fact that it's so useful to not take damage while you're approaching a fight. This is just a small build fight tip that I recommend you guys doing. If you get ramped off like this, what Forza does is actually build two walls edit this one wall that's towards where the other ramp is get the cone on top and then immediately go for the angle so he approaches from above go for the edit and if this guy didn't place this floor right here he's got a free kill just lined up just because he caught the guy off guard the guy's still focused on this original box where Forzio was well meanwhile he's popped up from above and you can see this guy's completely caught off guard by it so this right here is an absolutely picture perfect setup by Forzio he's approaching from above he's going to go ahead and try to replace baits out this guy's instant reaction and then gets the stare in and while this guy's kind of worried about the stare what does Forzio do instead of pressuring the same wall trying to go for a shot from the same angle instead he pressures from a different side this weakness that he immediately spots on top gets the floor cone replaced most importantly realizes the guy's trying to make some space and rebox away so he gets this floor cone in on both hand sides gets the shot in and as soon as he gets that shot rather than coming in even with attack which he probably could win this fight pretty quickly if he did that instead place the wall to good just fundamentals not taking damage places that wall now as the guy kind of panics he jumps in and then commits the angel and catches him completely off guard. One thing that I think is really underrated when going for a refresh endgame is sliding a cone into somebody's box rather than going for the wall replace straight away. A lot of players, as soon as they hear their wall getting broken, will just backward jump and rebox. And if you get the cone in there quick enough, like 4 CR does here, you can often get free damage and maybe even a kill as they rebox. So the guy gets out and he immediately starts chasing him, of course, making sure he's following through all the old builds. Now he commits in and remembers that this is the floor here from earlier. The guy reboxes towards it. And again, as he drops down this wall, you can see he doesn't actually go for the wall play straight away. He goes for the cone slide, which makes it really uncomfortable for this other player. Now they're forced to panic and come out towards them. And the Forzio commits into the box and gets the refresh. It's a really good tactic that actually works during the majority of games and also works during trios as well. Okay, so in this next storm fight, there's a couple of really nice things that Forzio does. First of all, it's just the extended cone from below to catch the guy off. Basically, you just look to the top hand side of the floor, just anywhere on this north hand side here, and you're able to get that cone up, and it basically stops the guy from healing and forces him to rebox downwards, which is where Forza can approach again with that control. Another nice thing I noticed was him trying to do this bait out play where he just kind of baits the exploit into the box, trying to see if the guy is going to go for a mistake and try to pre fire pump him as he jumps in, and at that point, Forza will just fly through the wall because the guy had broken up his shotgun. Again, goes for one of those replaces with his shotgun and gets the cone slide in again. So you can see he's getting that cone control, making the guy really uncomfortable. And again, just trying to force out a small mistake from him. And at this point, with the cone in the box, with the guy reboxing, kind of panicking in the storm, he instead just decides to hold a really tight right hand peak. This is really OP angle, as you can see here. This other player can literally see nothing of Forza. I can't barely get a bit of damage on him. And he's able to just completely hold a right hand peak and spray through there and get the kill. Alright, that's all for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed and also subscribe if you enjoyed the content and let me know down below in the comment section which pros you want to see in this video. I'm probably going to be doing most of the players from different cash cups that do well on different regions. So let me know if there's any players in specific you want me to look over and analyze their gameplay for you guys to learn from.